Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined as always by a guy who's really, 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 really rockin' Gary Butterfield. It's rockin' Gary. It's ro- it's Here rockin' on 95 Gary. Ninety five the Gup. What? Ninety five point one the Gup. Oh my God, Gary, we would be really good DJs for the four minutes the FCC let us be. Like a morning, like even morning zoo crew, or like I, I would like to do it at any time. We could do the weather, and, and I think it would be fun to get. Oh fired. my god, these two, when these two guys get together, even if they're just saying the weather, it's fun, right? Yeah, they just have like I, a friendship. You know like the the show's funny, but it's more about their friendship. Yeah, I just feel like I know them. They're my friends as well when I'm driving to work. Yeah, or when uh, I'm doing whatever. Morning zoo crews. When I when I learned. Uh, how early those people have to get up yeah. and stuff from like comedians talking about it. I didn't gain respect for it. No. Cause I'm not going to respect a morning zoo crew, but like a word that's somewhere on that spectrum. Yeah. You, like, you at least in- acknowledge the sacrifice. There's a sacrifice to getting up at like 4 a.m. and maintaining that level of obnoxious energy for that long. It's the same way. I don't respect firemen. Let it burn. But no. I do acknowledge yeah. that they get up early. Sometimes they get up incredibly early. Uh, and they get to hang around with axes and well, and Dalmatians, uh, and Dalmatians, like they have a, very I mean, nervous dogs. Honestly, they have a pretty good life mm-hmm. and we, we should probably stop coddling them. Uh, Dalmatians and axes. That's a duet of pleasure. Yeah. That's uh that's my favorite. Uh, I don't know, Gary, you know, bands whose, whose album is that Dalmatians and axes? Oh boy. <laughs> like, so, so <laughs> that, that stuff It um, XTC. Okay. Excellent. So, Gary, before we get into this incredibly powerful, extremely interesting item, I do have a, a little yep. – I want to do a little exercise, okay? Okay. I, I have a couple bits for this week, too, so we're going to – Yeah. we got to share I, time, I have okay? I have an exercise and I have a story. I think I'll save the story for later in the week because it's uh, heavy. Okay. But uh, okay. the exercise is this. I was listening to uh, – what's the show called? Bonfire <laughs> Side Chat today. Oh, so one of my all-time favorite segments where Will – Picks apart things I've said on Bonfire Side. No, it's chat. good. It's good, Gary. Oh, it's not okay. about. It's not about any of the wrong <laughs> things you periodically say about the video game Elden Ring that I then uh, correct you. It's about your Just reporting. Honestly, on one of my all-time favorite things. Okay. Yeah, it's about your <laughs> reporting this? of those moments. That is where I would like to. I don't. I'm not. This isn't criticism. It's just an exercise. <laughs> Who let you listen to our shows? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we have this direct line. I, I'm a Gary. I'm not just a <laughs> friend. I'm gets a, to do this. <laughs> you know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not just a friend, though. I'm a patron. So. Uh, God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> Gary. But again, this isn't about correcting the many things that you say that violate my head cannons in Elden Ring, and which make me incredibly angry. This is about. So I want you. I want you to say the phrase. My friend, oh, and my friend Will Hughes said this. Can you say that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, my friend Will Hughes said uh, this. Co-host of the uh, award-winning podcast, Everything to Guppy, that you can listen to on our network. I, I probably should And say let's that. try that again, because it's an exercise and we're okay. building a response. <laughs> this, is, this is much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, no, Gary, I do try <laughs> to, I do try to... No, you, you, you do great stuff. at it. You're very considerate about that stuff. I'm just sensitive to it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you're very good. Uh, my my friend Will Hughes, co-host, co-host of yeah. the award-winning uh, podcast, Everything to Guppy, said this about- On Elden this Ring. network, which you can find on this network. On this network. network you can listen to, comes out every Tuesday. I'm amazed that you pulled that. <laughs> I think, did you just- I, I did. I was the last minute. Yeah. You know, I had to stop myself from saying <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. <laughs> Uh, Sunday. <laughs> That's why I said Tuesday. Yeah. That comma, I, I struck that comma and turned it into a period at the last second. All right, Gary. I feel like we've we've learned and grown a lot during this exercise. I, you are 100% right. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> no, in this situation, you're right. I should. There's no reason for me not to, to, to give you credit for the thing you do on the network that I'm proud of. I, uh, I, boy, you're one hundred percent right. You have judo flipped me into deep discomfort now. <laughs> I, I, I came as with all my bits. I come at it with the approach that I am in the wrong a hundred percent. So, I can I can I tell you a, a thought I had? Yeah, that was about that's that's related to that. Please, uh, I don't know if you do this, but sometimes when I'm uh, 
like anxious, I'll play out little conversations in my head. Const- yeah, that's called, you know, yeah, that's people. an anxiety disorder. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, it's, it's not great. I'm not saying it, it's good. Uh, and one of the things was you and I talking. Mm-hmm. Like I was in my head, I was carrying on like a fake mind palace conversation. Sure. I also have a Gary and Tulpa I have conversations with. Yes. The, the Will Tulpa in this conversation. I hate this you guy. You said something. I hate this guy. And I, I, I generally don't remember what you said. This That's not me trying to be productive. Sure. Uh, but the Gary Tulpa in response said, you know, your philosophy, whatever you'd call it, that, you know, everybody is virtuous except you. Uh-huh. Or something like that. Like, or uh, everybody... What was, I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but it had to do with uh, your your inwardly facing cynicism, like giving uh-huh. everyone the benefit of the doubt except Will. Yeah, and that reminded me of that. Uh, you talking about that that bit? Well, to be fair, Gary, the, I don't know the internal lives of anybody except me. I'm aware of the wasteland that's in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a solipsism thing. I always had to I always had to come down to that. But yeah. it's just like, man, if you could send extend just a little bit of that that benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, if you, if you gave me an inch, I'd become like a dictator and stuff. Gary, it's our key. It's our key. Our key. Our key. Our key. Our key. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> Gary, real quick, bust out four more Pokemon that aren't Pokemon. Okay. Our key. Uh, Glumtrub. Glumtrub. Yeah. Glumtrub. Glumtrub. Uh, Frizzer. Yeah. Fizzer. Frizzer. Fizzer's a electric water type that just kills itself the first time it uses a move. <laughs> just immediately. It's shaped like a, a toaster and a, and a <laughs> an obituary. It's like, and a, it just, <laughs> it's like a Rotom that's just killing itself. <laughs> just, a, just a toaster in a bathtub. <laughs> it's when two Rotoms get together, <laughs> like in dignity. Funny. And, um, and then uh, Thorbus. Oh. Thorbus. 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 Yeah. Gary, great job. You're a, you're a powerful talent and an intriguing mind. Uh, you want to talk about Thank what you. might be the most powerful item we, in the entire fucking game? All, all we do now is have weeks where we say this is the most powerful item in the game uh, over and over and over because they're all saved for last. Yeah. Uh, this I love this. It's wild I've that, only gotten it It's wild that this once. is not an unlock. Yeah, I love that it's not an unlock. Let, let, pe- let the people play. Yeah, I think I, you know, I, I, think let, I got jump this. The curve. I think I got this in a red key run once. So I was going out like into uh, the, the error room. Like I had like, I think it was Bethany with red key, which means you can just, yep. I think tainted Bethany even. So you can just like jam red key over and over again and go out to the edges of the map and get to the secret, like the, the error rooms that are the, out the there. The ultra secret room. Yeah. I, I love that shit so much. So uh, what our key does, do you want to say it Gary? Cause I, I don't want to take uh, this, sh- take this from you, but no, no, it's quite all right. Uh, so this is, it's worth explaining a feature. Mm hmm. Of everything to guppy or of uh, the binding of Isaac in case people don't know it. Uh, if you're playing on PC, you can hold down the R button to restart your run. Yeah. And this is something you do. Uh, let's say, you know, you can do it. You can kind of scam it. You can just keep doing it until you're next to a treasure room or whatever. Um, sometimes I'll do it if I go into a room and take two pills and they're both like speed downs. Yeah. This, this I'm like, well, you know what? Fuck this. This is like, something that happens a lot on stupid. floor one where you're just like, oh, this run is not good. This is not going to be fun. Yeah. You know, like it's not going to be fun to challenge but past it. What this does uh, is it it's an item. It looks like an R key on a keyboard. Yeah, literally like a, like an old, uh, like a like a school keyboard, like a, one of those like that mechanical gray, that, keyboard. Yeah, that gray plastic. IBM. Yeah. Uh, and then you can only find in secret rooms. You can only use it once. And when you use it, you just start over at the beginning of the game, keeping all your stuff. So this is I if you don't play Isaac, this doesn't sound good. But you have to understand that every floor in Isaac can be understood as two guaranteed chances to get a power up. One from the treasure room, one from the boss. Yes. Uh overall, uh your the what's going on in Isaac is that the difficulty of each floor scales up and you are trying to create a run. Uh, from those power ups that is that scales faster than that difficulty. This puts you back at the start of the difficulty curve while keeping you at the exact same spot you were on the power curve. Yep. Uh, it on is on the power curve. Like yes. Insanely uh, powerful. Uh an uh, interesting way to look at this would be one way to think about Isaac runs is that your power is directly commensurate with the number of items you have. Uh-huh. Um, like that's not always true. There are items that are dog shit, but in a general sense, the more items, the better, Yeah, uh, that you can have. So just like, yeah, this, this allows you 
purely to have a stomp, like a victory lap. It's basically yeah. like, except it's except it's canon uh, within like the game's it, exactly. like unlock mechanics and things. Yep. Uh, so you can get to this is so awesome for getting a lot of stuff off your list. Like if you have yes. a character that's maybe hard to play with, you get the R key. You can go through, you know, fight Isaac or whatever, or fight the lamb, fight a, a go through mi- one you know, of the medium. ending paths. Yes. Then restart and go through another one. That's much harder. Like shit. I'm going to go to hush and then I'm going to go take the portal directly to delirium because this run can do it. No matter if I'm playing the lost or the keeper or anybody, any of the hard characters. It's, you know, yeah, uh, it is, it's, it's a gift. It's, it's really cool. And it's like, it, it speaks to that thing we talk about from time to time that one of the things that make Isaac makes Isaac different from uh, a lot of the roguelikes that have followed in its path is this complete willingness to occasionally let you just fucking break the thing. Yep. Like, uh, I feel like so many of the, I, I play a lot of roguelikes and I feel like they're all like, well, that would be unbalanced and just don't let yeah. you do it. And Isaac's like, no, fuck it. If you find this rare item, blow the fucking doors out, man. Just take the biggest fucking Isaac shit of your life. Yeah. I, the metaphor yeah. got bad there, Gary. No, no, I'm taking the biggest Isaac shit of your life, a.k.a. this podcast. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, a, a the, multi-year uh, project of, of of the biggest Isaac shit imaginable. Oh, my God. If you had, If you had to take all of your shits over the course of several years, then never had to shit again. Um, I mean... I don't think I, I I think I think it'd be like fucking uh, Dragon Age where like 60 percent of people don't survive the joining or whatever the fuck it is yeah. to become <laughs> to become a brown <laughs> warden, be, become a Shia. <laughs> if let's say if you could survive it. All right. Here's here's the scenario uh-huh. that I'm giving you. Uh, you have to shit for a year. 365 days. You will not not be shitting. During that time, shit will be coming out of your asshole. After that, you never have to shit again. So on the one your body hand, just perfectly absorbs things. So on the one hand, it's kind of like the Israeli military service thing, right? It's exactly like the Israeli military service thing. Uh, am I? Can I? If I'm wearing a diaper or a colostomy bag, can I kind of still move around and stuff? Yeah, yeah. People with those things. <laughs> like, yeah people who who wear those things do move around it is is the, well i guess the question is the shit is it is it one continuous shit no i imagine that uh it still depends on what you eat so but, but also uh, if you what i eat in the future no uh, no, no, just what you're eating now. Well, then how does so, it take like, into account all the shits I would have taken for the rest of my life? I, you know, wormholes. I, I, I'm not totally sure. Uh, let me, let me rephrase. It doesn't take into account what you're, you're right. You po- pointed out a logical fallacy in my genie. Gary, I, I think, uh, I, I think it's more interesting if it does. And then we can also, so you, you have one continuous so shit vow. dropping out of you. Yep. Uh, so we're, yep. we would build these like. Very tall toilets, right? Like yes. four store. Now I'm trying to think about colon blow toilets. Well, yeah, but I'm also. Yeah. I mean, colon blow is exactly what we're talking about, right? But um, yeah. Now I'm a ima- I- I'm getting distracted thinking about what the length of all the shits I'm ever going to produce is. But I'm trying to not go down that particular rabbit hole. What if you crab walked around the world from here until the day you die? Exactly. Like, what but, would be the trail? Yeah. But can Gar- you go to the moon? But here's the thing, Gary. What if they were? causality independent so they they were also yes. reflecting what you ate in the future we would have scientists like gary what if like everybody shits in the future they invent a way to make shits pleasant or edible or gary what if one day everybody's shits suddenly start cutting off Ooh. and now Ooh. you are a member of the shit science task force who has to figure yep. out what is going to destroy humanity and attempt to uh, alter it. Now we've got a fucking By movie, going back man. through your feces uh-huh. and looking at what they ate. Oh my god, what if like you're like, oh shit. Like, what if it's the stuff and they're like, wait, there's a lot of the stuff in there. Yeah, like, uh, and that's why, you know, there's one, we, we find a Howard Hughes figure uh-huh. who's been saving it. Yeah. And that person in his time is considered a maniac, but is very important to science because you can actually read the geologic tale of what's going to happen to humanity's diet 
through going through their jars. Gary, is the movie called Shitstorm? That's a pretty good, pretty good name for the movie. Yeah. By the way, you said Shitstorm. go back and fight yeah. Hush a second time. This does not reset your timer, so getting to Hush is going to be tricky unless you oh. have a. <laughs> One of the items that pops that open. <laughs> You've been holding on to that? How'd you put that? Yeah, I imagine you put that in the little block thing in Tetris <laughs> yeah. when you hold a block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is a great idea. This is, this is you know, if you're going to try to get me into a time travel visual novel, this is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now I just need a couple of waifus to pop down in there. Yeah, we just had, yeah, just had to have a couple of tragic diarrhea waifus to throw on the cover. I tweeted this, but gonna, real real fast, Gary, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this tweet. Uh, I mm-hmm. went bowling yesterday, and they let you pick your own screen names. Guy on the lane next to me, <laughs> yeah, waifu lover. Waifu lover. Love it. <laughs> was he bowling alone as well? No, no, no. He was with uh, Domo oh. and Plushy. Domo was a real friendly guy. He kept giving me back-of-the-hand high fives. <laughs> <laughs> when I'd pick up like a hard spare, he'd like, yeah, man, tap. I'm like, all he right. He was just kind of watching your, bo- your bowling? He was keeping an eye on it. Uh, it's, it's a weird relationship. You kind of made some friends. <laughs> I kind of made some friends with Domo and, and yeah. Waifu Lover. Yeah. There's a solidarity amongst bowlers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, if people like the show, what do they do? Uh, they can go to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV uh, and support the network. Uh, and then, mm-hmm. as I often mention, through Ronald Reagan's principle of trickle down economics, some of that money will go to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can leave us a rating review on Apple Podcast or Podcast Addict, uh, like this one. Uh, yeah, left by... Uh, oh, I have gone through all the Podcast Addict ones, so i got to switch over to iTunes, oh. uh, which means i got to scroll back for a minute. Uh, let's see. Sorry, this just takes a second. I might I might cut this no, down a little bit. Uh, it's quite all right. Sorry, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of them. I'm, we've been having good... Uh, Good responses lately. Uh, let's see. Good crop. I think this is where we're at. I think this is Chesapeake Ripper loves Alex. We who bully okay. Will during his streams have unionized. I was listening to a podcast the other day that referred to podcasts as movies for your ears. So I want to try out some new ad slogans for Guppy. Everything to Guppy. It's degloving for your ears. Oh, and that was a five star review from one of my fucking stream weirdos. That uh, that's an evocative phrase. It's good. It sounds like it hurts a lot. Yeah, there there are a bunch of creative yeah. weirdos, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, well done. Uh, good night. Good night, everybody. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every item, trinket, character, and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and I'm here with Gary Butterfield and co, technically, Will Hughes. Yeah, Gary. That was a long walk. Uh, and and yeah, and I'm still kind of in the woods on it. Like, okay. I, I kind of feel like I got so here's- walked into the woods, and now I'm just in the woods and I'm scared and I'm uncomfortable. And so I'm here, Gary, it's a little bit like, hint. it's a little bit like the, that bit in the green night where he gets led into the woods and we're going to have it's that very long, much like that. that long and you're Barry Keoghan and I'm, uh, Oh, you mean uh, that weird little guy with the face? That weird little what, baby, how did I refer to that guy? <laughs> the weird little baby face man. Yeah. Who's the jokester. He's the yeah. jokester. And then I'm, uh, is that fuck? Is Devin that Dev Patel? Dev Patel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and we're just going to have that little zoom around and then score. Oops. Skeleton. Yeah. Imagine I said Gary Butterfield and co imagine co was spelled K O oh, fuck man. Now and I, get I said it. And that's- technically. Yeah. Oh it, shit. I was going, uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, I don't know, man. No, Gary, I'm it's on board a- <laughs> now. I love this. This is very you like good it now. It's, Thank you. Cause the item is knockout drops. So that's, that's yeah why that's happening i wanted to reference a technical knockout and i was trying to think of a punch out thing to say yes but i didn't want to just say like the guy from punch out mm-hmm. so i yeah i do yeah. feel like uh punch out may have primed us for more technical knockouts than bo- than boxing actually <laughs> than actually uh, happen yeah yeah the uh it's because it's men punching each other in the face really hard it's not hard to get a real knockout
That's that's uh, true. During those things. I mean, people do win yeah. by decision all the time, but like that's uh, true. the technic like our technical knockout is is that just where like a cop comes in and says, "No, nah, if you hit him again, it's murder." Yeah, <laughs> stop play, stop this barbaric death sport. <laughs> yeah, this um, and no further. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've tolerated it for many centuries, but now cops say no more. <laughs> Gary, you ever um, think about how uh, if I just ran and like gave a guy a concussion by tackling him on the street, it'd be a crime. But if I did it on an NFL field, it would also be a crime and they'd, they'd also charge me with trespassing. I think about that a lot. I, Will, I wanted to tell you, bring to your attention an exciting opportunity. I love this, Gary. I love Bit Gary. This is, I mean, it's only kind of a bit. <laughs> I you know love only kind unhinged, of a bit, Gary. Absolutely unhinged offers for everything to Guppy. Do we? Uh, I, I forward them to you every once in a while. Like, people will email us a thing. And I think Cole gets most of them. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, everything to Guppy is tied to my email address. Because while Cole isn't our boss, he is our business manager? Cole, Cole does the back end stuff, yeah. Okay. Um, Cole's our, so, so he. I'm trying to find a metaphor yeah. here that won't trigger uh, your like death art, like your he, like fucking star control. Uh, sent all sentience or enemies t- death aura. There's there's no, there's no there's it's not that complicated. He does yeah. the back end tech. He's stuff. A, he's your admin. I do community management. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like he he does <laughs> the tech stuff and the business stuff. He he's like this uh, operations. Uh huh. You know, and then I'm, I'm, and you're the uh, face uh, man. Community. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gary, we just need play, to move I away from a boss, like any kind of like centralized boss structure and just view you in terms of the A team or, or in terms of shadow runners. I knew you were going to fucking pivot to that, but I want to talk about the A team. Yeah. I have no interest in talking about the A team, even though the A team movie was better than you might expect. Um, <laughs> We got a, an absolutely bizarre uh, website from a website called, or email from a website called Wisdom. Okay. We want the voice behind everything to guppy on Wisdom. We'd like to offer you the top badge, our highest badge, if you join us. So I might read you the sentence by sentence. I want you to tell me when we're in. Mm-hmm. And the second you say that we're in, I will respond yes to this marketing person. Can I ask one question first? Yes. Uh, with Phantom Limb, was Wisdom the toaster or... The coffee cup. Coffee cup. Thank you. Okay. Uh, still a no? I mean, you haven't you? started, so yeah. Still a no. No, that, that was that, that was a started. That was the start. We want the voice behind everything to go beyond wisdom. We'd like to offer you the top badge, our highest badge. Oh, is this us. the subject line or the first sentence of the email? That's the first sentence of the email. Okay. The subject line is top badge for everything to go be. Okay. All right. Uh, you said you're saying yes. No, no, no. I was, I was saying continue. Okay, okay. Wisdom is the place to meet, share, and learn from fellow podcasters. We are venture backed and growing fast. The top badge is Wisdom's version of Twitter's blue check mark. I'm in. Okay, done. Yep, <laughs> the, we did um, it. We did it. All right. I can't. Uh, I, I, I'm dear, finally fucking verified. Dear Megan, sounds good. Exclamation point. Love you. Gary, I've never actually had a good experience. Do you want to hear the rest? I've never had a good experience with a Megan. Uh, Me either. Uh, Each day you'll get a new batch of voice intros of interesting podcasters to listen and meet, hand chosen to be relevant to us. We can also talk live to audiences of hundreds or even thousands. Uh, Hundreds or even thousands? We fucking do those numbers. Well, that's why they want us. That's why we ended up on their thing. (laughs) Um, Yeah. my favorite bit about this, so the PS, by joining Wisdom as a top badge, we'll also get 500 Wisdom coins, our creator <laughs> currency. <laughs> Don't you want the 500 Wisdom coins? That Will? you can spend on dollars? Uh, it's it's indeterminate, yeah. to be determined. Right. <laughs> like, Excellent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond, instead of just saying yes, I'm going to say, dear Megan, uh, how can we spend wisdom coin? And love you. Gary. Is this NFT? And is this an NFT thing? Gary, I feel like the NFTs you, died. Gary. Isn't that nice? If I feel like they went back into I hibernation. sent email. Yeah, I was gonna not actually send this, but I did it as a reflex. So oh, oh no! It's a undo, undo. Yeah, if it's so, in Gmail, you have a, a, <laughs> a, a critical fifteen seconds. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, should what you undo? <laughs> 
<laughs> How do you do it? And there's an undo button somewhere. You can undo an email. Somewhere? It saves in a buffer. You motherfucker. You really <laughs> fucked us here, Butterfield. We're going to get wisdom coins now. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe we'll be able to spend them on something good. I on the plus side, um, my name's me... not on any paperwork with this shit, so uh, I can snooze it. Um, <laughs> yeah. how do I... Snooze the email, Gary. Snooze it. <laughs> Looking for it uh, is unread. <laughs> Where is the snooze button? Control snooze. <laughs> Control snooze. Well, I can't find anything, so we're gonna get some wisdom coin. <laughs> oh God! I don't want to have to pay taxes on wisdom coin. I uh, it, it's actually you pay the taxes in real money. Yeah. So that's that's the sad part about it. Uh I, I will always I can always send this to spam. Uh <laughs> yeah. hopefully. <laughs> um, I hope this fucks over Cole a little bit. <laughs> just because I want to have to explain to him he's like, Hey man, are you saying yes to emails that you get about this? <laughs> I have to be like, Well yeah, but as a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him your social as a bit. As a bit, as a bit, I signed up duckfeed.tv for wisdom coin. <laughs> I, I just, one of the things I was thinking we needed is more wisdom. Which is uh, the coffee cup. Yes. Yeah, I watched all Adventure Brothers now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of season seven? Uh, I think I like it more than you. I think it's fine, basically. Uh, by season, like, five, I feel like they've committed to being a slightly more character-based show in a way that I don't like as much as the earlier seasons, but fair enough. Mm. Fair? Not enough Orpheus. Uh, what I am not enough Orpheus. Not, not nearly enough Orpheus. I want Orpheus to get a lot of stuff in the movie, yeah. if they make the movie. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, knockout drops, Gary. This is If we're fucking around a lot this uh, this episode, it's because this is the, the least item of the items we're doing. Yeah, least interesting. And, and the worst one, even though I always take it, Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I take it is because I'm addicted to the noise it makes. It's neat. Uh, so this is yeah. knockout drops. It's uh, vis- visually, it's a little thing of eye drops with a big fist on it, which I would not buy in real life. <laughs> I think I might. Finally, eye drops <laughs> you, for men. You <laughs> like dude drops. <laughs> You're just going by the vi- visine, clear eye, yeah. eye punch, black eye. Yeah. <laughs> Clear eye, black eye. Marketed like um, fucking hot sauce, like ass destroyer. <laughs> My Steve-O's butthole pucker <laughs> explosion. Uh, As featured on Hot Ones Eye Edition. The, the, the hot ones where they had to put the hot sauce in their <laughs> eyes. And nobody can do it. Just, it's just the host. Just Maya Rudolph just screaming. <laughs> okay, this one's the mild. Ah, ah. So what do you and Paul Thomas Anderson talk about at home? Ah, ah, why? There's got to be an eye. I can't see. Where's the eye wash station? We listen to high em. We listen to high em. <laughs> She's a national treasure. <laughs> I, I that's hot ones with a uh, another way you can get me into visual novels. Hot one with eye drops, <laughs> with hot sauce eye drops. Um, this gives you a ten percent chance to shoot a little fist instead of a tear. Uh, that does not more damage, but does a concussion effect, which we talked about. That's not great, but does extreme knockback, like sends the enemy all the way across the room, and makes a little sound that Gary likes. I, psh, it makes this little cartoon punching sound. It's very similar to the one in the LJN Robert Ra- Roger, Robert Rabbit, Roger Rabbit uh, game Robert Rabbit. Uh, that you do. I'm Robert, Robert Rabbit. Hello, Robert I'm Robert Rabbit. Rabbit. My brother is Roger. <laughs> I have not been in the movies and I do not care for James. Yes. <laughs> yep. I practice office administration. I'm a clerk level two. Uh, I am married um, to another rabbit who is normally proportioned. <laughs> the uh, We have three children. After that, I got the snip. Mm-hmm. It just seemed um, responsible. Jessica's no. very pleasant. I enjoy her company, but I am a little weirded out. It's weird that she keeps putting her boobs in my face. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the uh, So, yeah, that's what this does. It knocks back anything, even if it feels like it shouldn't be knocked back. Yeah, like bosses and shit. Uh, so, like, hush. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's 10% and zero luck. Uh, it gets up to 100% at nine luck. Yes, uh, and they will do uh, damage if they hit a wall or another enemy. Which is neat. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, just real cute, you know. 
Yeah. You're shooting little you're shooting little fist. You're crying an entire human fist. Yeah. Uh Wiki That's notes cool. that this will fuck you over in the boss in the in the beast fight because you'll be knocking yep. the um the ultra sins off the off the screen constantly. I have done that and it sucks. Uh they, their attacks come out of nowhere. They'll start doing like one of their dash attacks and you won't see the wind up at all. So it'll just like murk you from behind. Mm-hmm. No good. All right. Um uh- I think we yeah. did it, Gary. Uh, if people enjoy the show, what should they do? Well, patreon.com slash duckfeedtv is a great start. Great start. And finish to what you should do. Well, not quite, Gary. Uh, oh, yeah. And then also leave us ratings and reviews on Apple. Well, start with ratings and reviews on Apple Podcast or Podcast Addict. Really? Then patreon.com slash... I would think so. You think you think we're uh, kind of we're kind of get, like, getting them in there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Get them in the system. Yeah. You know, (laughs) and then once we have that data, we'll start. Yeah, join them in the system. Then we're gonna give them one wisdom coin a piece. I hope, man, if she answers this question about wisdom coin and tells me what they can be doing, my next question is going to be if wisdom coins are transferable. Because I will give Guppy listeners a wisdom coin. Third question: Can we buy a Harrier jet with them? I why I did ask what we can use them for. I know, but like specifically whether they have a Harrier jet. They might. Do you know that story? uh, Venture. uh, No. Uh, So Pepsi in like the mid to late 90s did a Pepsi Bucks uh, scheme. And these are horrible, you know, bad schemes. Yeah. Right. Uh, And they were like for and for one million or whatever Pepsi Bucks, you can have a Harrier jet. And then some kid got them Uh, and then sued them when they were like, no, we don't have a fucking Harrier jet. Yeah. Is it very similar to Stampy on The Simpsons? Exactly like Stampy. You know, take the money. No one takes the gag gift. Yeah. Uh, Gary, you want to we'll review? See. I do. Uh, this one was left on uh, Apple Podcasts by Ice Waller. Apple Podcast U.S. edition. Still got plenty of U.S. ones to get through before I can do the fucking Scandinavian ones. <laughs> or even Dane. Yep. <laughs> Weird show. The only podcast I go to great lengths to make sure my wife never hears me listening to. Five stars. Thank you. <laughs> good good move. Very good move. Smart, smart mm. move. Smart move. Powerful. Good night. Good night. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by like the 15th best Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie, Gary Butterfield. That's fair. Yeah, it's not very yeah. good. Uh, I don't I don't even know what happens to that. Like, if you put a gun to my head and said, what's the premise of Eraser? I couldn't tell he's you. He's a guy who goes and like ara- like vanishes people for the government, but then he finds a woman who shouldn't be erased. So instead uh, he goes after his boss played by James Conn, which is like the most interesting thing about the movie is like James Conn playing like a, a Schwarzenegger bad guy and goes, Hey Dugan, you're erased and kills him. So a race in that movie is just killing them. It's I, not like Looper. Uh, it, there's no sci-fi to it. It's not a sci-fi okay. uh, movie. It is, yeah. it is vanishing people for the government. It seems like that would be make it a lot better. As if he was like literally on making them. That would be, uh, Gary, yeah. that would be better if he had a gun that read like, well, Gary, now we've come up with another great premise for a visual novel, which is the gun that it's erases. It's visual novel week on everything to guppy. Somehow. <laughs> like, somehow. The gun that erases people from reality, which there are other, like that, that premise has been poked around at before, but. Yeah. That's a good idea. It is. It's, it's no gungeon gun that can erase the past, but. Sure. But, like, you just um, shoot someone and they were never born. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, I hope Grant Morrison does something with it before some visual novel gets a hold of it. I'm okay if uh, Grant Morrison doesn't do more things with things. Interesting. I, I You know what? what that's unfair. I have not read a Grant Morrison comic since I tried Joe the Barbarian, like, six years ago. And I was like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, thanks like for the, the diabetes representation. The Nameless is good. I haven't read it. Is the it? Nameless is good. Yeah. Should I read his novel? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Um, he's pushing it real hard. On Facebook, it's constant Ludo ads. Yeah. The last but, thing, the only thing I've read from Grant Morrison recently was when someone asked him if the like charming sociopath in that was Mark Miller. And he was like, eh, I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I, uh, whoever the, this generation's Grant Morrison is. Yeah. I hope it gets that guy. We'll never know. We'll never know because we'll be dead. And we're already. Or they'll just be operating under our. It could be X, Triple X Station, and I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. You mean Triple X Tentacion? I don't know how to say that thing. Me either. But yes, that's probably what I mean. But, but Gary. It could I, be Post Malone. As It's not. Gary, I promise you, Post Malone is not the new fucking Grant Morrison. <laughs> Post, he's, he's got a lot of cool face tattoos. <laughs> he's got a lot of them. <laughs> he, he really went absolutely carnival on that shit. Uh, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, Gary, uh, let's let's talk about this item because it's interesting. Uh, it's super interesting. I don't like it, but it's real interesting. Uh, this is yeah, this I, is eraser. I want to like it. Like this, this, yeah, this, this. I really want to like this. So uh, it's a little pencil eraser. Mm-hmm. Um, looks a lot like it what the shop. looks a lot like butter. I'll tell you, it looks a lot like butter. It, it, it does look a lot like butter, different color though, and even I can tell that. Uh, <laughs> oh, someone's you, getting cocky about his cones. It's, it's, <laughs> cone cocks. Uh, it's a, uh, it's an active item. It recharges once per floor. Yes, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, or once per room if you miss. Uh oh, is uh, that because okay? With, yeah. So it, it, you hold it over your head and you throw it at an enemy. If you hit the monster, the monster disappears for the rest of the run. Yeah, it's just you removed no longer from have to deal with that other mom. Yep, doesn't mean you'll get fewer monsters. Other monsters will spawn instead. But if there's an enemy that but you, you don't hate get that fighting, monster. yes. And there are so many that I hate fighting. Yeah, like you think this would be good, but Gary, there are you know so many that you hate fighting that removing one yes. from the pool ends up feeling kind of meaningless. And per floor, so after you, if you hit somebody, you lose it until the next floor, and. Nothing else recharges this. Batteries don't recharge this. Nothing else yep. lets you do. There's no way to do this more than once per floor. Per floor. Yeah. So the reason this doesn't work, one reason it doesn't work is that enemy sets tend to change between floors. Like each set of floors yes. has a few enemies I really hate, but not all, not very many of them are perpetual. You know, like there are things that just kind of, they just dry up. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of the things I hate, you cannot really run into until they start appearing. Mm-hmm. You know, like I would love to get rid of those uh, eight legged, like jumping tainted um, leaper guys. Yeah. Those things are the worst, like they're, they're... Uh, but they don't show up until they show up. And then you fight one of them. Now the once per you know? floor thing. So you, you go into like the first room of the mausoleum and there's one of those uh, things that puts the shield on other stuff and you go, you wipe yeah. those out. That's, I can see that as a use case. It, it gets into fiddly territory, right? Yeah, super fiddly. Uh, and it takes up an active use slot. So it's like by the time you're getting into the real headache stuff you want to get rid of, you're basically dedicated to this being your active item. Yeah. Which is leaving a lot of utility on the table. It's also um, being real accurate in Isaac against most enemies is yes. kind of hard. Especially, yeah, throwing things. Like if you, uh, Bob's Rotten Head, part of the reason why that's not such a great item is that unless a boss is like slow and big, it's hard to hit with it. Um, it's the reason why you need like a critical mass of red locust for tainted Azazel to work yeah. or tainted uh, Polyon to work. Uh, I did from the wiki learn uh, an interesting thing about this, which does raise my estimation of this item slightly, uh, which is that okay. this lets you, this is a way to cheese delirium. Uh, okay. So this will not just kill a boss automatically. Cause that'd be crazy broken. Uh, mm-hmm. But it does do 15 damage to a boss. So if you get a boss down to like the last hit, and then hit them with this, which means you had to hold on to it for the whole floor. And you have to know how much HP they have. Yeah. Uh, then that boss will be vanished from the game per usual. And if Delirium tries to turn into them, it dies. Yep. That's real cool. That's really cool. The other I'm use glad that case, they do that. But it's yep. pretty it's pretty, pretty low chance the, of pulling that the, off. But as a way 100%. to get out of the worst fight in the entire game, I do appreciate it. The uh, the wiki doesn't seem to mention it, uh, so maybe it got patched out. But this also used to be a way to get rid of tainted Izao. Oh, neat! Um, so that wasn't chasing you the whole time. You had to get him down to fifteen, but you can get rid of cha- tainted Izao. That's neat. That's cool. Yeah, just fiddly though. You know, holding down R key. See earlier this week until you get this, you can clear some completion stuff on J- tainted Izao. Is boring. Yeah, tainted Jacob. Um, yeah, I really want to like this. I just, I just don't. Uh, if 
I don't know what I would do to fix it. Um, maybe I, I think throwing it is the big problem. Like if this had a use case, like instead of throwing it, you did, uh, the dash that tainted Judas does, mm-hmm. you know, where you just have to touch the enemy yeah, or like good. you turn invincible and the next enemy you touched. That would be, you know, that would maybe make this good. Yeah. It'd be yeah. like you were, uh, a time clone in time cop, you know? Yes. I think about that one. All, that's a joke I, I make a lot is referencing what happens to Ron Silver at the end of Time Cop. Mm-hmm. Uh, where he touches mm-hmm. his uh, future self and they, they turn into a horrible flesh blob. Yep. That's part of Time uh, which Cop. Which is I'm pretty accurate. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what would probably happen in real life. Oh, yeah. In, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Gary, if you had yeah. a gun that could... you If you had the erasing gun. Yep. Who would you shoot? Hideo Kojima. I don't know if that's no, true. No, no, but it was power. Oh, answer. shit. But what if Kojima came up with a game? Oh, my God. What if that was a... I could... Metal Gear Solid 6 <laughs> time time snake. Fuck. I, uh... He, he likes modern military stuff too much. Okay, but we could make the time gun like a, a modern... Like, it could be like a SOCOM or whatever. Like, it could be really... It would have... It would... Nah, it... it I don't think he would do it. Okay. It's not his style. All right. Uh, He, he might... You know, um, I don't, he wouldn't, I wouldn't erase him from, from history. He gives too many people who I, who I like joy. Okay. Uh, I'm not a monster. All right. Uh, Yoko Taro. So. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> very fair. Very fair. Extremely fair. Um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what should people do if they like this show? Uh, Gary, they can go to uh, patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and uh, support mm-hmm. the network, the whole network, the good shows too. Yeah, all the all the the work that uh, we all put in. Yeah, me, Cole, the rest of them. Yeah, um, the, et cetera, uh, et cetera. Uh, real excited. Me and Jeremy are going to start covering a good X Men run. If you want to listen to Days of Future Cast, we've been mired in kind of mids for a while. Yeah, but we're going to start talking about the Remender X Force, which is really excellent. Okay, cool. So, uh, which I think you would also like as well. I know that you're not an X Men guy, but that's heady and weird i mean i've poked into x-men comics from time to time uh there's just too many characters yeah no that makes sense uh i think you might dig it deadpool in it um love that deadpool uh he is actually uh yes gary uh Uh, how big a boner did you get with the the whole deadpool 3 news i haven't been able to walk straight for a week yeah just just walking into traffic lights I broke my leg and then I immediately read that news and the boner gave me a, a splint. Gary, that's it immediately kept my leg straight. Okay. So you, you're, you have a boner, but it's going straight down your pant leg. Yep. Literally just straight down. That sounds I like don't know if I've mentioned this agony, before, man. but my, yeah, my dick points down. Oh, so you uh, kind when of I, like, when I fuck, it's all like drilling. It's like, like a tea bag. Yes. Okay. It, it's very, it's very, it's like, a, it's like a fuck night. Like a, it's very tea bag. So it's going, so even if you're laying down, it's going like straight down from your body. Yeah. That's kind of, it points at the bottom of the bed. That's kind of cowboy hard, man. A cowboy is incredibly hard. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Uh, for it, I mean, I look like it, but I'm very flexible. It makes a uh, pissing while sitting down a breeze though. Oh, ab- like, you know, normally, uh, pissing and arousal are, they're really in conflict with each other. Right. Mm -mm. I've never had more accurate pisses than when I have a boner piss with my weird dick. Oh, my God. I'm really Uh, thinking about the evolutionary benefits of your weird downward pointing dick, which is also my favorite yoga pose. And I'm uh, if I fast walk, it's kind of like jerking off. Because my thighs kind of give me some side rubs. And if I get some talcum powder in there, Gary, what is it about you that takes a beautiful, heady, conceptual conversation and decides to drive it straight into the toilet store, man? (laughs) <laughs> just i we were having a really good i had that yoga position joke i i felt really good about the talk we were having about the uh, about a fun fantastical universe where the dick go down and and you really had to just fucking take it straight to the garbage it, dump it's one of the main things i do with my ding dong i was just living my truth okay uh you know it's a it's one of the two big purposes for it yeah what's the other one uh, oh, uh, weighing down uh, stacks yeah. of mail. Yeah. God, I, I hate this fucking mail, but thank God I have yeah. this. There's got to be a better way. Um, no. Oh, sorry, Gary. Uh, I, just imagined, also, I, I just imagined you uh, in like the before picture on an infomercial, like doing like mm-hmm. the big dumb guy shrug with your dick just like I, ineffectively holding mm-hmm. down some mail. 
<laughs> yeah, just and you're like, shirtless because you're it, always it, fucking shirtless in every single photograph. I'm sure that's right now. God damn it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't like wearing shirts. They're not comfortable. They're restrictive. They make me sweat more. Um, yeah. All fair points. Uh, Patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV. Ratings and reviews to Podcast Addict or Apple Podcasts like this one left by uh, Niche Philip 498 Life-ruiningly addictive. When I was in middle school, I got addicted to World of Warcraft. I spent every hour possible at the family computer, escaping reality into wonderful fantasy. This show is similarly addicting. Five stars. P.S. I accidentally forgot to feed my bird playing WoW, and he died as a result. Sorry, Larry. Your memory haunts me daily. <laughs> Fucking A. God, what a good what a good pivot. Like, perfectly good start. P.S. A plus P.S. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell good night uh, it's real good good work Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every trinket, 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 and trinket in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always is a fashionista contestant on American Idol, Will Hughes. Hey Gary, sorry, I just opened, uh, I, I want to engage with that intro, but I did, uh, I needed to check what this item did, so I had the YouTube mm-hmm. window playing, so when I tabbed over to the tab, it just started really playing the music at me. Yeah, <laughs> the, the uh, it didn't come through. No, I mean, was, good. Uh, it's on my phone. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that would make that would make sense. So I'm a fashionista contestant on American Idol. Yep. Puzzle it out. Okay. Yeah, I will. Modeling. Oh, okay. So we got. It's a yeah. Clay Aiken joke. Yep. And uh, what if Clay Aiken was also a model? I got it. Yeah. There we go. I yeah. I solved your mind labyrinth, Gary Butterfield. Thank you. I'm glad you've mastered the mind maze. Mm-hmm. Just like um, Billy Corgan asked me to. I read your tweets. Yep. Thank, oh, thanks, buddy. I move you oh, in and out cold. of mute as necessary. <laughs> I I get annoyed by your tweets. I've never muted you. That's hurtful. Hey, you should. <laughs> you absolutely should mute me, man. I, I don't mute people I know in real life. You, well, it's not a permanent It's strangers. not a permanent sentence. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I move everybody, day. literally everybody I know in real life. I move in and out of mute on Twitter uh, so that I can not interface too much with their internet versions of themselves. That that you you have a complicated relationship with the internet versions of people yeah. and the human flesh blood versions of people. Sure, so that makes sense. Uh, hey Gary, yeah, it's trinket day. It's trinket time, baby. Trinket time. Fuck, trinket time's much better. Sunday, Monday, trinket, Days, Tuesday, trinket, Days, Thursday, Friday, trinket. Days. It has alliteration. It does. I love alliteration. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, boss bonanza. Bo- it's boss nanza. It's boss gags. Uh, boss naz. Gary, I think your tweets the, are generally uh, very funny and very thoughtful. It's just sometimes I get no. I I get really obnoxious about that. I don't always try to make jokes. Like on there. Sometimes I'm just like, I got to say something. Nobody's around. Yeah. around. And I get grumpy. Like I, you know, I'm saying I'm the same way. Yeah. We, 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 we don't use Twitter that differently. You and I, in some ways we're um, very similar, my friend. In some ways we are a dark mirror. And now Mr. Two Bond, sides. let us dine as gentlemen before the death begins. I will make this quick, please. Or, but, or don't make it long. Gary, so, it's our fucking show. You, you don't want that. Um, <laughs> I know you. I know. <laughs> I know you don't. Uh, you're not a big music guy. Do you know the band, The Dismemberment Plan? I'm familiar with the name. It's a memorable name. I couldn't tell so you for in a, for a million years what the sound what it sounds like. Yeah, that's fine. They're like a math raw, like a mathy kind of pop band. Okay. Uh, they uh, broke up. The lead singer made an album that is largely considered one of the worst albums of all time. Excellent. His name is Travis. The song, the album is called Travis Stan. And the song has four different, the album has four different songs on it called Get Me Off of This Coin. They're written from the perspective of presidents who want to not be on the coin that they're on. Okay. Four different songs. 
So I just wanted you to know Would that. Would I like this album, do you think? It's really wretched. Okay. It's really hard to listen to because I, I was a fan of that band and tried to follow this guy to his solo career. It's pretty tough. Like these, the but ideas I, you're presenting, like the, the pun names, the, the stupid high concept yeah. stuff, this is all pretty Will Wheelhouse. It's, it has, there's a compelling air to it, which is why I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, at all. Like, it's pretty fucking wild. Uh, get me off of this coin, part one, mm-hmm. part two, part three, and part four. Is it chronological or is it in terms of money value? I don't remember. I've listened to all, I've listened to that whole record all the way through. I don't, and I you, think I listened to get me off of this coin, part one, a few times. Do you fucking end with Washington? Is like Washington the big climax? Are they Sacagawea. Are, Sacagawea is the big climax. Okay. <laughs> Is that no, I don't know oh, if that's true. I, yeah, that's way what I do because the rarest of the the coins. I know a thing or two about rare coins, and that is the rarest coin. It, it's very rare. They only printed <laughs> about a million of them. You can only go and buy them at the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, Gary, can I can I tell I, you a story that gets a little heavy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, so, like, warning: uh, death disgust uh okay. for people who don't want bummers in their lives but it, i i i assure you the end does reflect it's going to be about that one guy's bird it's going to so <laughs> i know this guy who had a bird named larry uh, oh. all right so uh olivia had surgery 2 weeks ago uh and okay. on wednesday of this week i wake up to her calling me being like i'm having really bad stomach pains uh can you please come get me from work so we can go to the er and i'm like yep uh yep so for for context reasons, I allude to this from time to time on the show. Uh, in 2014, uh, my fiance Shanna uh, uh, very abruptly uh, had a pulmonary embolism and died, uh, and yes. I uh, am permanently fucked up by that uh, in ways I don't know if therapy would fix. But gosh, I haven't tried. Um, <laughs> so I do have like weird, like one of those things is like if there's a medical thing, I'm like, yep, we're taking care of it. Uh, no, yeah, no wiggle room on that one. Anyway, so, uh, yes, the, the end result is, uh, everything was fine. It was, uh, it was just, a, it was like a muscle issue, but like, if you have sharp pains after surgery, you go check them. Right. Uh, yeah. But like after this very long day, cause we were at the ER for like eight hours, I think, uh, everyone was really nice, but it was just slow. Like we're home and I'm having like a little breakdown uh, just about like the, the feelings that this stuff brings up to me. And I'm like, I say like the most maudlin shit imaginable, which is like, you know, I'm never going to forgive myself for what happened to her. And at that exact moment in the bedroom in the other, this is happening in our kitchen in the other room, unbeknownst to me, my, uh, real dumb cat cookie, uh, is wandering around like the big, beautiful fat potato that she is. Yep. We have a, a light and sound machine that's on the floor in the bedroom, like a light projector to like make pretty light patterns. Mm-hmm. And she manages while trying to eat to bump the switch that turns the music on on this thing, which is the <laughs> most like we we listen to Enya for like five minutes. And now we're trying to applicate. Like, oh, so the moment after I say the most maudlin fucking thing, suddenly I just start hearing, oh, and like, I'm crying. And then Olivia and I are just like, what the fuck? And we start cracking up. Just like this burnt by the fucking very cat good. as hard as a man has ever been burnt in his life. That is so good. <laughs> just playing oh, the cookies fucking- I always thought cookies. He was a bimbo as well, but maybe Cookie's a genius. Yeah, just playing the fucking play me off music for my fucking trauma. That's so very good. funny. That's very funny. Ah, uh, I love it when shit like that happens. It's <laughs> like I don't believe in miracles, but I think that when something that improbable does happen, you know, like there, there's there's got to be a word for it, right? Kismet. Like that, that you know, it's like yeah, kismet. Like that's just such a beautiful little thing to have happen. Oh man, you know, made me so happy like, and and helpful. Like yeah, you you know, uh, what a what a good way to like you know not snap out of it. I don't know whether the respectable way to say what I'm trying to no, say. Like to feel better song. temporarily because yeah. you're laughing. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, yeah, like it, it's uh, to cheer you up mm-hmm. even if it was fleeting. Uh, that's great. Yeah, but it made me really happy. 
Uh, Gary, it's that's very funny. Modeling clay. This is a weird one. Oh, modeling clay. So you would yeah. have had a good uh, opening for this one as well. I guess I would have. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is real bad. Yeah, Gary. We I think we talk a lot about how trinkets are worth a third of a regular item most of the time. What? If, yes. What if they were worth one of a regular item, but you didn't get to choose? And yep, uh, it changed it's only everyone. half the time. Yeah, yeah, ha- and half the time. And uh, there's like one sentence that I think explains why this is so bad. So like, this is a piece of clay. The idea is as a fifty percent chance to mimic a random passive item. Yeah, it's real cute. It's got a little happy face on it. Yeah, it's cute. Modeling clay is cute. But you go down. Uh, black candle does not remove the current floor's curse. Yeah. Fuck off. It has a <laughs> like this thing, modeling clay. So again, this is replicating. So every room basically, it used to be random. It used to be, you would go into a room and there's a 50% chance of getting a random passive item. Uh, that has yep. been patched so that now basically every room in the game has a item coded into it. Yes. Uh, and it has a real weird interaction with passive items that... Uh, generate big effects or generate consumables and things like that. Yeah. Like basically because this is such a fucking like ambitious thing. Like, Oh, you only have this item for one room. Well, it's weird because there's a metronome, which is an active item that does the same thing and also sucks. Yeah. Uh, Like the, 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 the real basic takeaway of this is that the, the item pools are too big for this to be in any way useful. Too big, and you have to uh, choose an item. You know, like there are items that just won't do anything. Yeah, like they're just situated. Like an item is not meant necessarily to have a use case in every single room on a floor. Yeah. Also, this pulls you know, from like, the um. This pulls from the whatever item it is pulls from the pool of the room that you're going into. Yes, unless you have chaos, yeah. and then it goes, which is cute, but. Like the idea, so like something like Dogtooth, which is a, a an item that teaches you when there are secret or secret rooms, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's good. Like that is, you know, that's fine. It's a fine item. There are too many items that do it, but that's fine. Uh, if you go into a room where that's not true, nothing happens. And that's true for a lot of these items where just like, there's just nothing for it to interact with. Yeah. It's just like a blank space. So, and like, again, like Bummer. trinket one third of an item, this ends up being significantly less than that. Yes. Member card. The special trap door will not spawn. Fuck you. That's all that item does. Yeah. Like, I, very irritating to me. <laughs> like, I, I, I hate this thing. Yeah. It, this, does, um, this feels like one where they were like, oh, this could get too powerful. Uh, and they didn't follow yeah. that usual Isaac. Uh, and again, this is not an easy mm. unlock either. This is a tainted Eden. Uh, a mother with tainted Eden. That's really hard. Like, that's not a very fun character to play. Mm-hmm. As as we start moving into the tainted characters, weirdly enough, like it seems like it'd be fun. It's it's not. It's too. It, that is uh, and, too much chaos. Yeah, it's too much chaos, and it's cool that they're like, "You like chaos, do you? Have all the chaos in the world." Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad that they did that to you, but it's not fun, and it's very difficult. Like it's basically a crapshoot if you're going to get to mother with a build that you reroll that's good enough to to beat it. Yeah, and just to get this really garbage item. Yeah, it's uh, uh, they did. Mm-hmm. Weirdly enough, it's they patched into Legend of Bumbo. Uh, so this is in Legend of Bumbo. Funny. Gary and I have both been getting on, yeah, like, gotten back on a little bit of a Bumbo kick. Yeah, uh, Bumbo still a good game, and they updated it since the last time we talked about it. They added a bunch of tainted stuff. Yeah, so tons more items and everything, and they made uh, colorblind mode. The skull boss that you had to uh, see which colors they were to know how to attack him uh-huh. now has the symbol. Yes, thank you. So they they did what I want all colorblind. Anything to do with colors should all do that. Yeah, just give the uh, just give in the, the information in an a alternate way. Yep. Uh, fuck you, Jonathan Blow. Fuck you. Uh, that would ruin your aesthetics. I can't do it. Yeah, fuck off. You ableist piece of shit. Um, yeah. I, I got distracted by not liking Dom. Uh, can I change my answer to the eraser gun? Yeah, 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 Gary. What is it? John Blow. Oh, okay. Oh, oh uh, huh. world ended. World ended. Ah, uh, damn it. I didn't realize he was a load-bearing douche. He was a load-bearing douche, Gary. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you never know who's going to be a load-bearing douche. Gary, I'm excited that we seem to have gotten to the end of this week without having an argument about AI-generated art. I'm amazed by that. I'm I'm really yeah, happy too. about it because it's, I'm you know, extreme, I, yeah. I don't like having that argument. I don't I was, like arguing with you about stuff it. on Twitter. 
Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's not fun for me. I don't yeah. like doing it. Um, Sometimes yeah. it's a little fun. Mm-hmm. Sometimes? No. 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 Okay. I, can, can I tell you the secret of what makes arguing with you not as, not as fun as it could be? <laughs> Gary, I, I feel like I, I know, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know if you do. I, I think if you and I were ever to have like a, a real argument about that, yeah. I would need to like have a handshake guarantee with you that you'd only say things you meant. Exa- Gary, that is exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, that that's what it is. Like you, you're you're slippery. Like I am all levels of seriousness and no levels of seriousness seriousness at the same time. And AKA it's up to you to guess. The guppy vibe. The guppy vibe. That's what makes it not fun for me. Yeah, but it's no, probably I, what makes it fun for you. I, I so I get it. Um, but it, it's just uh, that that's the thing that makes it. But I mean, I'm not not bugged. About it. But Gary, the real answer to that is that my mind is a constant. It, it's there's no solidity in my mind. I have no values, yeah. Gary. I just have uh, ideas that I espouse yeah. at any given moment. Uh, it's what makes me such a hollow, broken person. I my secret suspicion is always that you do have values, and that that's but fake. But I'm not going to be able to find out them. until I die. So I, yeah. I just. It's, it's the main thing I want to know from getting to the other end. Like I'm also excited to find out because I don't know them. It's gonna be great. We're gonna find out together. Yeah. If 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 I'm if you're right, I'll owe you a coke. Because I'm such a contrarian, Gary. That the it's just whatever's in opposition to what I've most recently heard. I'm, I know. I'm basic. I'm I'm a fucking sociopath, Gary, and I love I, it. <laughs> I, I, I like you're preaching to the choir, man. I don't think yeah. you're a sociopath, but I know I, <laughs> you are a contrarian to a level of dedication that I've rarely seen before. So, but it's not like, conscious dedication. It's just how it works in here. No, I know. It comes off as extremely genuine. It, Thank, it, you. It's, it's, Thank you. Thank you. It, that's the mark of a good, so, you know, sociopaths aren't good at fooling people, are they? I don't. Um, I think, I think they are. That's why they become yeah, president I, and stuff. I know. I was joking. <laughs> and they I definitely really, are. I love animals. You do love animals. That's true. Uh, uh, less than most people. Yeah, as long, as long as they keep up their amusing bits around my grief. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as long as they stay funny. As long as their uh, comedic timing remains relentless. <laughs> impeccable. Remains better than most humans I know then. Yeah. They're, they're good, but no, that's, that's the only thing I don't like about it. I, it would be, I think it's how I respect, you are and the way you act. No, it, it, here's the thing though, is like, I know yeah. that's a, that the whole thing's mean, but I respect your mind. And I respect your opinion. So when we do land on something where I feel confident that you're only saying things you mean, I like debating stuff with you because I think you're smart. Yeah, it just, it, it, to me, the fake, the idea of it being, and this actually is a good microcosm of the AI thing. The mm-hmm. idea of it maybe being false ruins it for me. Yeah. Whereas if I'm giving myself a charitable read, what's going on in my head is that I am able to adopt almost any position from the point of view of the person who would argue it and analyze it from that point of view. But I'm like fucking Will Graham from fucking Hannibal because like I go, I get so far deep in it that I can't remember what I ever originally believed. And then I do do art art murder. Yes. It's a, you're in, in super deep cover. The, uh, yes. yeah, wait, wait, I, that, that, that all tracks with my understanding of you. Uh, Let's, yeah. Do we need to do more postmortems on why I'm not that fun? <laughs> it, it, you're extremely fun. As long as we're not debating about something I actually care about. Yeah. The second it's something I actually have any passion about, it's too real for me and I, it makes it tough. Yeah. You know, completely fair. I, I am probably, uh, too earnest about this shit. Like, it's but not I, a brag because it bites me in the ass all the time. It's the reason why I get all these weird parasocial uh, things. Uh, like, I'm just like, no, I can't. I'm not going to lie. I don't like lying unless it's obvious that I'm lying. Like, it just, yeah. you know, and that's not good. I could probably, like, you know who has it figured out, and you'll never hear me say this, is yeah. Cole. Because he, like, is just like, yeah, that's personal. I'm not going to talk about that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know anybody else who does that. <laughs> like, why is it's that good. so rare in my specific group of friends? <laughs> like, Whereas I'm living my entire life around the George Costanza principle that it's not a lie if you believe it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a sociopath. It comes down to whether we believe in objective truth or not. So again, AI art. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think we did just have the argument. That was a good version of it. Mm. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> that was not fun for you. <laughs> No, it was it was fun. I just don't, you know, I don't. No, it's good. You didn't win. Is that why you feel bad? No, it's because yeah. I've had like I've been writing lines to say about the inevitable AI art argument in my head, 
and then okay. be like, shouldn't say that. So <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> But it fucking does create a, a fucking tension in my head. <laughs> and I'm acknowledging the tension because within certain very limited frameworks, I'm an honest person. Gary, would you like a review? I like to think that the reason why you do that is because you also <laughs> respect me. Like, do you, do you have little Tulpa arguments with other people who say things? Like, or um, most people who say things? I, I in the way that I will transfer this into being positive for our friendship is that you do that the same for the same reason, just a twisted funhouse version of why I like having debates with you. Sure. Cause I, I uh, think you're smart and I like your, I think your opinions are well thought out even when I disagree with them. That is true. But also there's the fact that I only have like three friends at this point. So yeah. it's not that's like I, it's a real wide pack. Well, I'll take it. The, yeah. <laughs> like I'll, you know, that's, that's fine to me. I'm not greedy. Uh, I would uh, like a review. Yeah. How about this one uh, left on Podcast Addict by uh, Moldgask? Uh, title is, and text is, that's a five-star review. It's a good one. Yeah, good. It's a, Maybe like the best it. Good one. week, good crop. Good week of reviews this week. Yeah, great oh, crop. I'm very excited to get into like, I'm really excited to get into like the one, like the UK reviews someday uh, and just have them reflect on the show from like 2017 or whatever. I, I'm really curious, uh, what things I've forgotten and then remember them forgotten again. Like it's also so in the past. Yeah. And of course I yeah. will do an act, a regional accent for every country I read a review from. Yes. But not the region the country's from. Nope. It's just going to be Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. That's a region that's in the UK. That's uh, a, it's Brooklyn, a, it's a... UK. Hey, the queen died. Hey, what a kick in the boss. She popped her fucking clogs. When the moon hits your eye like your queen who died. That ain't no more, eh? That's Charles. Umbasa. Umbasa, baby. Patreon on the comments. Talk to you TV.